Travis Scott, Young Thug, Mama C. So. Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy Emerson Nyla. How are you guys doing today? We got here Nyla wearing the Come Up Vibe. If you guys want to go cop some, like I said, sell and sell Come Up Vibe box logo. If you guys want to go cop some, go to comeupvibe.com and purchase some merch. Today, we have a special guest, my boy Malloy. What's up? It's your boy Malloy here, Valley Boy, Pop Shop Playground, everything like that. So. <laughs> we also got Zay. What's good, bro? What's going on? I like the hat. I like the hat. Where'd you get that hat? Shit, got it from, you know what I'm saying? Somebody special. Somebody special? <laughs> hey, yeah. You got a girl? Hell no. Hell no. <laughs> All right, bet. So yeah, we got Malloy. What's he called? How did we meet? So uh, I guess like a couple years ago, I had Snap and I had you on Snap. Yeah. And like you was doing like some video shit. And you was yeah. like, I can edit your videos for you type shit. Yeah. So, you guys know what year it was? Like, bro, that was a while. Like 2017. 2017. Yeah, 2017. 2018. So, so you, what's he called? I I think I was like a freshman or something back then. Yeah. And you were actually like popping off because you were like doing, I don't know if you were doing shows, or at least in your Snapchat, that's what it seemed like to me. Yeah. That you were like doing shows at like parties or something like that mm -hmm. with the mask, yeah, the yeah. neon mask. And I was like, dang, this dude has hype, he's cool. And so like I was barely starting my videography like career or whatever. And I hit you up because I really, I was kind of like a fanboy yeah. at the time. And I was like, uh, damn, this guy's hype and I want to shoot with them. And that's why I was always trying to like hit you up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, after that, it was like after a few years, I think, into like. I think I started like promoting myself more than we started like shooting and stuff. When yeah. was the first time we shot? I don't know. It was probably the football thing, right? Yeah, yeah. I had, when I was back when I was playing <laughs> ball, he had shot yeah. like a blog and shit for me. But yeah, ever since then we just been locked in and coming together and creating. So yeah, and you put me on with like Poncho and like certain. Yeah, people. shout out Poncho. Yeah. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What about you guys? How'd you guys meet? So same thing, uh, yeah. basically on Snap, Zay would just I would be posting stuff like my music, and he'd be like, "This is hard, this is lit." Mm -hmm. I just I and I like I recognize names on my Snap, so I yeah. see him all the time. I'm like, "Okay, you know what I'm saying this is my <laughs> man." So, and then I link with Bro, and it's just been same thing, locked in. He got his own stuff going on, Zay Production. So everybody go check that out. But yeah, he he having his own motion and things like that. But you know what I'm saying, just locked in. So. That's hard. So, have you been posting music lately, or what's, so, what's going on? So, um, I took a break from music. I had to revamp myself. Um, yeah. I just wanted to come with new vibes and a new personality. So, um, I took like a three-year break. So, I haven't dropped music since like so, for a long time. So, yeah. uh, with this mu new music, I'm just reinventing myself and who I am as an artist, who I am as a person. So, um, I'll have music out this month. And from then, I'm just gonna keep it going. Yeah. So, so let's start from the beginning. You, were you born here? Like, so I was born in Kansas. Kansas? Okay. I was born in Kansas. Um, I was born in Kansas City, Kansas. And then um, I spent some time in Wichita, I spent some time in uh, Junction City, I spent some time in Lawrence. And uh, I'm, I'm getting ready to move to Georgia very okay. soon. So um, I'm excited about that. But yeah. Um, when I was when I was born in Kansas, my mom moved us out here in 2013. Okay. And since then, I've just been out here. So, you know what I'm saying? But I still claim Kansas City as my home. Yeah. And then you do uh, you do videos, pictures, and all that. Yeah, I mean, basically, I do pretty much everything. Like I started out doing photography, and then like ended up coming to some situations that switched me over to the videos, mm -hmm. and just started playing with that. And after that, just kind of elevated myself. You know, as well as the music too. So I try to like keep my hands in everything. You feel me? So you from Kansas too? Yeah, I'm yeah. from Kansas, Missouri. Right. So I've been living up here for like about three years or so. You know, what I'm saying trying to get some motion going. So and what year did you guys both start your guys' careers? I I started doing music in 2017. 2017. Like, I was not rapping or anything like that. Yeah. Like my mom don't rap, <laughs> my dad <laughs> don't rap. So I'm like, how the frick can I do this? But yeah, I started in 2017, I recorded my first song, and then from there I just started doing more music and releasing stuff, so, mm -hmm. that's it. Me, uh, I started in 2019. 2019? Like, music, like, uh, in particular, like, I just started making songs off my, you know what I'm saying, computer and whatnot. After that, kind of started getting serious with it, and after that, it just kind of took off, so, that's just, yeah, that's where it all started, though. That's all right. Why, uh, Georgia? Man, just because I feel like that's the target demographic of what I'm trying to do. 
we see a lot of artists go down there and just have connections and have support and things like that. And that's really what you need when you want to do music is you want to build healthy relationships with people in the industry mm -hmm. and you want to have a support, you want to have a fan base and things like that. I will say that social media has made it easier, yeah. you know what I'm saying, to create a fan base now because you just create your, like your online following and then mm -hmm. from there it'll turn to your real life following. But, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, it's just a, a good demographic for what I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm. So. You plan on moving? Or you plan on uh, yeah, I plan on moving to either, I mean, like you said, Georgia or Texas. Because, Texas? you know, just for the demographic, because it's just easier to be able to push yourself out more. So that's, yeah, that's what we're looking towards. That's good, that's good. I uh, hear that I find it hard here in Kansas to, like, just people are hard headed or something, bro. Like, it's, <laughs> it's hard to, like, put yourself out there because people are, like, envy, like your song, Envy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, facts. And it's like, I think one of the biggest things for artists is like they get in their head like sometimes I get in my head and I overthink I'm like damn I wonder what people think about this because it's mm -hmm. like the people that you've grown up with like from elementary to high school they don't really see you as an artist they see you as who you've grown up with yeah. so they don't give you that respect mm -hmm. and they don't really give you that avenue to just be the artist that you are so it's just kind of like well damn everybody treat me like a regular person so it's hard to be an artist and put on that persona and no one yeah, you know what I'm saying? It looks at me yeah. like that, so. This is hard, bro. That's all I hear, because, like, everyone's trying to move out because just Kansas City doesn't have the support for some reason. Yeah, and man, it's just the city. Yeah. Just and also, to that, too, I, I, I didn't even think about that way. Like, people you went to high school with, and then now you're trying to be someone else, and it's just kind of like. Sometimes they take you as a joke, I feel yeah. like. Yeah. And they be hating. Yeah. Because my music lit. Like, y'all yeah. go listen to my shit, my yeah. shit lit, but you. I play for somebody, uh, you know what I'm saying? I go, well, they like, uh, it ain't better than Sleazy yeah. or it ain't little Baby. Yeah. I'm like, bro, but like, you know what I'm saying? This is quality stuff. So, yeah. you know, it is what it is. I mean, you have every, there is a fan for whatever you do out there somewhere. Mm -hmm. yeah. Believe that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <clears throat> How do you uh, promote your stuff? What do you do to get your music? Lessons? I mean, I used to like just record videos of me snap, like cleaning my room or playing with my dog. Mm -hmm. But like, that's the same content I'm gonna create moving on, I'm gonna be doing other stuff like in the studio or how I make a song or how I sample the song and stuff mm -hmm. like that, like content creation. And I think that'll be a good like promo idea because like you said, people won't pay attention to really the song, they'll just pay attention to the content that you create. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So I just think content is king. So yeah. What made you pursue music? Was it something that you just it was just in you or I mean to be honest, because 'cause I'm good at it. Yeah. Like I feel like a lot of like a lot of times, a lot of people be like, I need to find something I'm good at. And like, but maybe like, even though you're good at it, you might not like it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm good at, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an athletic, so I'll, I, I play sports. I'm good at that, but I don't like it just because like the wear and tear on my body. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm really not trying to go pro and stuff like that. But yeah. like music, I'm good at it and I like it. Like I like listening to other music. I like creating music. I like being around it. So it's just an avenue for me where I'm kind of like, this don't feel like, like hard work, this don't feel like it sucks, you know what I'm saying? I like doing yeah. this, so. What about you? <clears throat> as far as um, making music and stuff Yeah, like, like what, per, what uh, made you pursue that? Uh, I mean, really, I've been, that's really been my dream, like, ever since I was young, and when I, like, got into a position to where I could actually make it for myself, because I'll be, you know how you just be trying to link up with other people, like, yeah. hey, I need to do this, this and that, and like, you know what I'm saying, everything wouldn't work out, so when I got into a position where, okay, I can really learn how to do this and mm -hmm. be self-sufficient. Um, I just ran with it because that's really what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Being mm -hmm. able to like move how you want to without like having to wait on, you know what I'm saying? Like clearances and stuff like that. Like yeah. that's really just what I like want to work towards. So. Yeah. So how many songs do you have out right now? So I have one. It's called Hang My Jersey. It was produced and engineered by Poncho. Mm -hmm. It was written by me. We recorded it in the pandemic in my living room. We had the mic hanging from the ceiling fan. Oh, so you could have done one of those TikToks where like, you know. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, and that was like two years ago. So that trend wasn't even popping at that time. But when I was writing that song, man, Poncho, my little brother, was just kind of like, this thing is going to be global. I think it has like a nice vibe. It has a good message and things like that. So I finally put it out 2022, February 14th, Valentine's Day. And I got like nine thousand plays on spotify right now so if y'all can give me the 10k go ahead and do that <laughs> but anyway uh i have a music video coming out in august to it 
and then, then from then I'm gonna drop some more stuff. So I'm excited mm-hmm. about that. What type of music are you trying to make? Are you trying to make like R and B and then rap or like? Cause you know. I have my own genre. It's called pop trap. Pop trap, okay. So it's using pop melodies and lyrics over hard 808 trap beats. Okay. And I also make other stuff that I can do any any wave, but it's like that's my main wave is just pop trap. That's my own genre I created for myself. Yeah. So, and I, I feel like my vocal, my vocals are an instrument. So sometimes I don't even need to be like I could do acapella stuff. So yeah. Um, I'm just you know what I'm saying trying to get my trying to get my uh, what's the word trying to trying to get my sound together. Yeah. Make sure it's crisp. And everything's like that, but you know. That's cool. You're starting your own way. That's, that's different. And Pop Trap Playground is my is my brand. It's a brand for the underdogs okay. because I am an underdog. Mm-hmm. So I, I realized that there are countless people out there who have talent. They just don't have the shine. They don't have like the spotlight. So I think the more I win in life, and the more I win as an artist, I win for them. Yeah. And that's what Pop Trap Playground is about. That's just our brand. That's just what we who we are. You know, we don't we ain't for people who have clout. Mm-hmm. We want to be yeah. famous. We ain't for people who was popular in high school. We straight for the underdogs, bro. Yeah. We just gotta prove to other people that we are as talented as the people that have the spotlight. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's so, cool. How many people are in that group? Right now, it's just me. Just you. But I'm sure there's people out there who are underdogs. Yeah. They don't realize it though mm-hmm. until yeah. they see there's a support group and there's somebody there for them like me. Yeah. So I'm sure there's millions of underdogs out there. So you plan on spreading that brand? Yeah, it's it's gonna spread just because I'm gonna take us there. Yeah. I'm gonna get us there. He pop trap, but he got his own shit. You know what yeah, I'm saying? But yeah, yeah. I'm you know what I'm saying I'm gonna get us there for sure. So that's good, that's good. What uh what else do you do? Like do you have any hobbies? What else do you like to do? Um what do I do outside of music? I play flag football. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying that's cool, I like doing that. We travel with that. Uh, I like spending time with my dog. Um, I like reading. I like doing self care. Oh yeah, this book here. I wasn't gonna get into this yet. We can we can do it now. So, I think the biggest thing for artists is to learn the business. Uh huh. Um, I feel like there's plenty of artists out there who have the streams, mm-hmm. but they don't have the business foundation to collect the money for their streams. Because in my opinion, if you do the business right and you collect your royalties. You can compare your royalty check from what you can pay from your nine to five, and you can think about quitting your job and doing music full time. Yeah. Just because now you can control how much music you put out, you can control merch sales, you can control mm-hmm. going on tours, stuff like that. But if you don't have your business right, you don't even know the royalties that you're supposed to get. Yeah. So you're just lo- losing money, you know what I'm saying? They're going mm-hmm. unclaimed. So this book right here, it's called All You Need to Know About the Music Business. It's by Donald Passman, and it tells you everything you need to know about the music industry in and out. I'm saying if you have questions about royalties, uh, lawyers, contracts, what type of deal you're in, what type of deal you want to be in, it's in here. And I think the biggest thing is reading is fundamental to your brain. Yeah. I'm saying too much of this, but not enough reading. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's one of my that's my biggest advice to artists, especially independent, is know the business, know what royalties you're supposed to get. You know what I'm yeah. saying know when you're supposed to get them and know why you're supposed to get them. Yeah. Um, the biggest key is to exploit your music. You want as many people to use your music as possible because you have to issue them a license to use it. You know what I'm saying? And now you issue a lease and now you have money coming in. Yeah. But most artists don't know that shit. I used to, five years ago, I wasn't knowing about no business, bro. I was just spamming people with my SoundCloud link. Like, that's promo. Like, listen to my song. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I wasn't thinking about any business, but as someone put me on to learning this, I got more intrigued about learning the business. So I want to just spread that. So, yeah. All you need to know about the big music business, Donald Pass. There you go. What's the main? What's the number one thing that you you did not know that this book taught you? That that's a good books? question. Um, the number one thing probably is royalties. I knew that you could get paid for music. I just didn't know how. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I also learned that artists don't just blow up. Yeah. Like a lot of times, these labels. They'll, they'll find an artist that got some buzz, mm-hmm. they'll revamp them, and then re-release them to the world. You know what I'm saying? Make it look like they blow up. Because mm-hmm. they have those ties. Like, the labels have ties to TikTok. Mm-hmm. They have ties to the marketing. You know what I'm saying? So they can make it look as organic as possible. Mm-hmm. But blowing up, you know what I'm saying? It's plenty of artists out here with good songs, but they don't got the label backing. So that's one thing I learned. So do you want to be, do you want to have a label, like, um, 
you want to sign a contract or anything when you make it out with music or I mean I want to take pop trap and let it be the label you okay. know what I'm saying yeah. I, I'm not going to say that fuck the label and stuff like that because there's pros and cons to everything mm -hmm. but I think that the biggest thing for artists is you need to have leverage mm -hmm. like if you have money and you go to a label now you can negotiate because then the label don't have to put their own money up because you got money now you have to talk yeah. about something else you know what I'm saying like mm -hmm. so I think the biggest thing is leverage as an artist make sure you got leverage make sure as you're building yourself up you understand that uh, you have rights to this and you have rights to that you know what I'm saying let's just negotiate you know yeah. saying you always can negotiate so I heard that if you get like a deal and they put money in it you have to pay all that shit back or something like that yeah that's a that's a good point too okay so that's called an advance uh -huh. an advance is basically like a loan so if the label gives you three hundred thousand dollars and say this is how much money we're going to give you to shoot videos to record to, to do promo you have to make that back to the label in sales you know what i'm saying you can't just go work and give them three hundred thousand you got to make sure that your royalty strings bring back three hundred thousand dollars worth mm -hmm. of music yeah. so you got to make sure that your fan base is strong enough to buy your music so they can help you pay the money back and that's why artists like drake and Nicki minaj and all these people are in such good deals because we know that when drake drop and everybody they, they gonna fuck with their music yeah. so they ain't got to worry about paying no money back plus mm -hmm. they've made so much money over the years it will be silly to sign a deal because they got their own money what they need a label yeah. for you know what I'm saying so that's a good that's a good point though bro advances are really key to know about yeah bro I don't know. so what happens if you don't make the money so if you don't make the money back you're in this thing called the red and in business terms that means you're in debt if you're in the red that means that you're below uh, the recoup line so you didn't recoup so now um, a lot of times the artists if, if they didn't make back the money and they're in the red they'll drop another album mm -hmm. and try to recoup from the first album but the second album also has a recoup uh, amount too that you got to recoup from. Mm -hmm. So then you drop two go. to try to get the one, yeah. but then you got to forget it. You forgot about the two after you already recouped yeah. the, the first three hundred thousand. So that's crazy. You just gotta you gotta be smart. Like, and not everybody need three hundred thousand dollars, bro. Like that's yeah. a lot of money. You know what I'm saying, don't go buy a car. Don't go buy jewelry. You know what I'm saying, I would take a lower amount. Work that first, see how much you actually can make, mm -hmm. and then be like, okay, this is where I can, this is where I range from. This is how much my fans are buying. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But if you got three hundred thousand dollars and plus you spend it on like jewelry and cars, you haven't even put nothing in the, in the music yet. You know what I'm saying? So I don't think that's smart. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so that's that the first time we learned this. Learned. Yeah, it it. I mean, it gets complicated when you're talking about percentages and stuff with numbers, but the basic is to always recoup, always be able to pay the money back. Don't be in debt. Because mm -hmm. when you're in debt, now they can control you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because they gave you their money. Yeah. So, you gotta find the right one, because can't they also like control what you put out? Or yeah, so that's, that's a good, that's called creative control. So a lot of times when you're in the contract negotiations, you know what I'm saying? The creative control might say, we will control the artwork look like, we will control when the drop date looks like, we'll control the type of music. And you'll see artists that came in the game doing rap, but in a contract, the final album says you got to make a Spanish album. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So yeah. now they got a link with Spanish artists. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Make that album. And it's just, that's a wave they wasn't even coming to the game doing. Yeah, but yeah. that's just something that the label throw in, you know what I'm saying? Because that's in the contract negotiations of creative control. Yeah. yeah. So you just got to watch out for that. But like I said, bro, as you build leverage, you get to negotiate. Be like, nah, y'all don't have creative control. Control. They're like, okay. You know what I'm saying we just thought we could say that to you. You know what I'm saying? See what you don't say. Yeah. But yeah, it's all about negotiation. Yeah, exactly. Have you gotten any deals? I haven't. Um, I remember the first deal I had. Uh, I was in high school. It was a distribution deal, and at the time, it was voided because I was underage. Mm -hmm. So I won't say what label. You know what I'm saying, but um, it was voided because I, I signed it underage. Mm -hmm. And plus, I didn't know anything about the business, so at that time, I wasn't mature as an artist. Yeah. So I just got some bread, and you know what I'm saying? I ain't never had nothing, so spending the money, you know what I'm saying? Not knowing what to do. But as I've grown up, you know what I'm saying? I got the book, now I know the knowledge, so I won't be making the mistakes again. You feel me? Mm -hmm. so. Do you have like set dates for albums when they drop? Or, um... Right now, I'm not even working on the album, for real. Okay. I'm getting ready to drop these singles. Okay. But um, I think an album is, is coming in the works. You know what I'm saying mm -hmm. I got ideas, projects, names, cover art, stuff like that. How do you come up with like uh, when you drop like a single or anything? Because you know how like social media how it works too. It's like whenever you post for specific hours, well, you'll get more like 
like I've seen it on TikTok where they get like more likes or something mm-hmm. based on the, the day or the time mm-hmm. and all that. Do you, do you think about that when you drop something? Um, so when I drop music, it take a lot of convincing from other people. Yeah. Like I'd be like, this suck, this ain't ready. And him or Poncho, they'd be like, bro, this is hard, drop this. And it just takes me convinced. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna drop it. So um, it's just first having that confidence and being like, okay, we're gonna do this. You know what I'm saying? The second thing, as far as the date, I don't really drop on certain dates. I mean, I dropped Hang My Jersey on Valentine's Day because I just felt like that was a vibe. You know what I'm yeah. saying? About yeah. love. But I really don't have like a certain day where I'm gonna drop something. You know what I'm okay. saying? So that's a good question, though. <clears throat> And then you've been doing music. Do you do like music videos for him or, or photos or anything like that? No, um, I mean, whoever needs, you know, yeah. photo, photo guys, videos, I do it for them. But um, personally, me, I just started off doing it for myself because I just wanted to drop an album. Um, I did it in 2020. Uh, just did it all myself, mixed it and mastered it. And just like he said, it takes a lot to be able to put yourself in a position that's like, okay, I'm going to just push this out. The art is the art, it is what it is. Like, I don't know, as artists, like, we get in our head a lot. Yeah. And, like, self-contradict, like, think all types of stuff. So that was, that's just really the hardest part, just being able to be like, okay, take my hands off it and just put it out there. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So what's your goal? Are you trying to, like, uh, do multiple things, like music, photos, your music, producing? Or what's um, your main goal? I'm really, I'm really trying to be, like, everybody needs a team. Yeah. But I want to, like I said before, I want to be self-sufficient. So... If I need to be in a position to where, okay, I need to record this song, mix it, master it, get concepts, pictures, photos, video, mm-hmm. I can be able to do that. So that's, yeah. you know, okay. that's that's kind of where I want to be. Yeah. So, that's good, though, because yeah. then you can do your own stuff for yourself. You don't rely on other people. So. Yeah. That sounds like the beginning of a, like a collective or something. For real? Yeah. yeah. For real? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. It's part of the, um, the Prop Trap vibes. I'm really trying to be on top of that. It's all about growth, so that's, you know... That's where we. That's where we're going with it. Yeah, so, everybody in Pop Shop is an underdog. Yeah. yeah. Everybody, yeah. even myself. How long have you guys known each other? Known each other? Like, like a, a year. year. Like yeah. known of each other, probably like yeah. four years. Four years. Yeah. Okay. You know what I'm saying so. Yeah, just you know what I'm saying. We're just trying to build up that chemistry and stuff like mm-hmm. that. And he's bit yeah. He's real business minded like me, so you just want to make sure your circle is the people that, the, with the goals you're trying to move forward yeah. to. You know what I'm saying so. Be pulling the equal weight around here. Yeah. So. <clears throat> so have you found your type of audience for your music? Uh, I think my audience is just kind of like people who know what good music sounds like. Yeah. Cause I, like before I started rapping or making music, whatever, I had like a good ear for music. Mm-hmm. Like I had a good ear for melodies. I had a good ear for lyrics and stuff like that. So like all my playlists were like raw. People were like, damn, you see your playlist? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I think that helps when I create, but um, my audience is just people who know what good music sounds like and people who like quality content. Mm-hmm. That's, okay. that's my audience. And then you said you started in like 2017, right? Mm-hmm. And then we're in 22. Did, did you ever have that one, like, you know, you start something and then you like procrastinate it and then you hop back on and you gotta mm-hmm. restart. Did you ever yeah. hit that point? Or yeah, you know? I was just telling you about, so, and even with Emerson, um, so, when me and em- when Emerson used to swipe up on my stuff, I had like a lot of clout. I had Six Thirty was going crazy. I had the Mass, had Ashley, another song, and like I remember having all that uh, that clout and all that following, mm-hmm. and then it just fell off because the engineer I was recording with, we just stopped talking, and that was just the main engineer. And at that time, I was down on my ass, no car. You know what I'm saying I, yeah. I couldn't get around, so I'm like. And it, it just sucked to see like it all self-destruct because of one mm-hmm. person. Not to say that it was his fault, you know what I'm saying? I gotta be accountable, but just kind of like, damn, bro, you really had all this and one person was subtracted from the situation and now it all fell down. Yeah. So then in my mind, I'm like, you gotta be more self-efficient. You gotta make sure that if somebody else leave, that's not you, you can still keep the shit rolling. Yeah. So that's just how I am now, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, I was at a place where I'm like, I don't want to do music no more because I know how hard it is to build that fan base back up. But, like, I'm, I'm in it now, you know what I'm saying? No mm-hmm. one going to tell me I can't. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. Because you, you were there, so you can always get better. Get back and get better, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. With growth and yeah. understanding and life lessons yeah. and things the like rule, that. Like, all that like, stuff from music, how you said, like, labels. Now you're, when, you, when it comes to that point, you know what your decision's going to be. You'll be right. smart about it, so. You know what I'm saying? You got to take them L's, bro. It'll teach you some lessons for real, so. 
Bro, you had that high. I'm telling you, bro. I thought you was like, I didn't even know you was from Kansas. I thought you were from like some other place. Like, you know, all these big <laughs> artists. Because you just had that, like, you had that image. And I told myself, I said, if I would have kept it going from there and now, I would have been on. Yeah. I promise. I swear to God. Because I just had like consistency. The end, mm-hmm. Like you said, you know what I'm saying? Everything yeah. was going. Yeah. I'm just kind of like, but you know what I'm saying? You got to be consistent with everything. Mm-hmm. So it's like when you fall off for like three or four years, it's hard to shake back. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But you can shake back. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You're able to shake back. So we're going to we gonna get it popping for sure. Yeah. Or like even people that like I had on Snapchat would repost your stuff. I'm like, dang, you know my Lord? Like it's really going crazy. Like, people would send me videos of like them singing my stuff. Like people in classroom. I remember this one video. This dude hooked up the ox to like, in his classroom, like on this projector thing, and start blasting my music. Everybody was like, "I'm like, that's crazy as hell." That must be cool though. Like you're in class, and you're it good, yeah. I was like, "Damn, this shit crazy, <laughs> bro!" Like, this shit crazy. Nah, yeah, you finna have this shit back, bro. Your shit is good. You have potential, very good potential, and especially because I mean, you're more knowledgeable now, and your music is way better than before. I appreciate it, bro. I'm yeah. just, just, you know, bro. I'm always here to support you. Like I said, from the jump, I knew you'd be like. I always see that you you have it in you, and you just gotta keep going. And, Consistency. I mean, the skills that's, it takes to be. Yeah. Yeah. Like when we started podcast, like I always wanted to have you. I know you just been busy, but yeah. We were so glad we get to have you on the podcast now, cause like we know that you're gonna blow up in like years from now or whenever you know we're gonna have you back on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you know, just support each we, other. We like believe that. in it. You know, everybody that we've had on the podcast, we believe in their what they're doing. That's yeah. the whole point of our podcast. It's like you're, you're like you said, it's, you're the underdog right now, but we believe in what you, you're going to come up with. That's why I did it. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, this is an underdog podcast. You know what I'm saying? They not real clouded up. You know what I'm saying? They not like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. A couple other podcasts I'll be watching, but yeah. it's just good to be organic. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because when you build an organic pod on positive things, you're going to get positive things from it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So this is super yeah. organic and I like it. And you know what I'm saying? I'm going to support y'all yeah. for sure. Yeah, I appreciate it, bro. You know what I'm saying? So what other uh, hobbies do you do? Other what else you got? Cause I know you also you used to shoot videos, didn't you? I don't even shoot videos. I do. I'm gonna do content creation. Yeah. As we talked about, so outside of music, I'm gonna build another personality. You know what I'm saying because I used to do. You right? I know what you're talking about. Skits yeah. and stuff. No, about, but I remember I would see you like recording like on the. Oh, like, so I was so that's a good. So my grandfather owns a magazine company. And I would shoot videos for the cars he was shooting. Because we it's mm-hmm. a car magazine. So yeah. I would shoot videos for him. And that helped me understand how to work a gimbal, how to uh, edit video and stuff. And stuff. Mm-hmm. So when I shoot my own visuals, a lot of times I'll just be telling the videographer, like, just shoot it and I'll edit my stuff. They be like, what? Yeah. And then that makes the price cheaper because they don't got to edit it. And it lets me learn how to do my own stuff and do it how I want. Because yeah. there's so many times I'll be looking at my stuff and be like, this ain't looking kind of how I want, but it's yeah. like, it's never going to look how you want unless you do it how you want to. Yeah. So, I, you know I'm saying? I'm, I've been working on editing and stuff like that, so. Yeah. You still be doing uh, crypto and all that? Yeah, just still doing crypto, still doing stocks, still doing real estate. Um, like how the world is now, you need several uh, sources of income. Like it's just mandatory yeah. now. Like having yes. one job is just not going to work. Yeah. And it's not your fault, it's just how the world's progressing. Yeah. So you got to kind of evolve with it. But you know what I'm saying? Uh, I didn't know anything about crypto. I didn't know nothing about stocks. I didn't know nothing about real estate. So I just reading it, reading mm-hmm. on it. You know what I'm saying? Knowing people who are doing it. You know what I'm saying? Learning, taking that time out. And it's helped me. You know what I'm saying? So if you want to grow your income, I suggest doing one of those three of those things or getting a vending machine because mm-hmm. I have those two. Oh, so yeah. yeah. So um, that'll help. Um, That'll just help with your Are those prices to buy the vending machines? Um, that's a good question. So, a lot of people when they when they think of the vending machine, they think of this vending machine that's like super bright, has the credit card reader on it, has all this stuff. I'm like, bro, you can get a used, you can get a used vending machine mm-hmm. for like seven hundred dollars. You can buy the credit card reader separately, yeah. put it on there. You can go to a Sam's Club, buy your food in bulk, and then. You know what I'm saying? Make your yeah. money back. You know what I'm saying? It's a process, but it's just kind of like, don't overthink it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And like, not all vending machines is like two grand. People think that. Vending yeah. machines could be six, seven, eight hundred dollars yeah. for a used one. Uh-huh. 
you can always clean it up you know what yeah. i'm saying when you when it gets delivered but it's like you don't got to start that big yeah and then as you get them they'll start paying for their like they'll start paying for themselves yeah so you'll save enough money to buy another one from the vending machine you first bought you know what i'm saying so how, how do you find a place because you can't just go to like fucking park okay, i was, I was yeah. about to ask that same question so that's I, a good I, that's yeah. a good question so again people be like the hardest part is finding a location no, not really. It's just, it's blind to your eye because, like, you see them everywhere and you don't yeah. think to be, like, put it there. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But the person you, the, where you saw the vending machine thought to put it there. You know what I'm saying? So it's just kind of like, think about places you're going to every day and just be like, I'm going to put it there. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. uh, if you if y'all got, like, a recreational park in y'all city, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like a basketball act, you know what I'm saying? Going there. Or you got a swimming pool, put it outside there, a soda machine, you know what I'm saying? But, like, I think the location is the easiest part. So you gotta right. talk to like the talk owner, to the owner and figure out her price. Like yeah, so that's a good question. Never yeah. offer like any money from your vending machine to them. Because okay. what you're doing is you're providing a service to them because you're the one that's putting the food in, you're the one that's stocking mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And that's yeah. gonna attract more customers because if a customer, you know what I'm saying, let's say he's hungry and needs a drink, he knows there's a vending machine in this yeah. place, he might stop, make that extra stop go in there and, you know what I'm saying, get something, and then yeah. buy something else from the business that is sitting in, you know what I'm saying, yeah. so it's like, you providing a service to them, they're going to make it think like, they doing you a favor, but you really, you're putting an attraction yeah. in their business, yeah. so. that's very true, yeah. Yeah, I was going to ask, because I have, like, a while back, I was trying to get a vending machine, so I was doing research on it, and like, every most of the videos I clicked, it was like, you need to learn, like, the state law, there's so many laws you got to learn, is that true, or is that false? Um, I don't know nothing about no law, like, uh, I don't think, like, like the there would be any licenses for food because it's all prepackaged. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I don't think you're not serving yeah. like you know what I'm saying, you're not serving food. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You just they were just saying it was like depending on your state or whatever, so I was like, damn, do I gotta do all this and that? like they made it seem like a big thing, so I was like mm. I'm not too ed- I'm not too educated on that part. So okay. I might I can't really speak on that. But I would say that I'm not sure if you need a license to put prepackaged snacks in the vending machine. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like I don't think that's a food handling license. I don't think like yeah. so but I will say, like, one easy thing is to put your vending machines under your LLC. Okay. Your uh, limited liability um, corporation. And what you'll do is, as you put those under your vending machine, you can get it, you can apply for a credit line. Mm-hmm. And um, you can start buying your vending machines through your credit. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so you don't have to come out of pocket. And yeah. then just recoup, you know what I'm saying? From. Mm-hmm. The credit putting the money in from the vending machines. So like did that. you have to start an LLC for just that? No, I didn't. I put the mm-hmm. money in. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But I just learned that for somebody else who does it. It's like put it under the LLC because now you're starting a business, you know what I'm saying? Okay. A vending company. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. yeah. That's good info. That's really good info. Yeah. So um, yeah. Anything, any other game? Cause you said that you invest, so how, like, what was your strategy strategy to learn this? Was it like more through books? Was it more videos? Was it like I know you say you don't watch TikTok, but I know TikTok you have those too. That's a good question. So, the uh, I learned stocks and crypto in the pandemic. Okay. At that time, the pandemic was probably the one of the most best years for attention span because mm-hmm. everybody was at home on their phone. Yeah. You know what I'm saying everybody's locked down, so anything that you put online, it was getting seen by a lot of people. Yeah. So there were certain pages on. Uh, social media where they would teach about stocks and option trading and cryptocurrency mm-hmm. and at first when I heard cryptocurrency I'm like what what is that you know what I'm saying? I don't know yeah. what that is and then people would educate you on what it is and what I liked about it was when you would bring it up to people they'd be like oh that's fake money or this the crypto market could crash but I'm like bro anything can crash yeah you know what I'm saying you just make excuses for something you're not knowledgeable on you know what I'm saying because once you yeah. get knowledgeable you less scared because you know what's going on yeah. You know what I'm saying? So when I as I was learning about it, I'm like, damn, this is hard. Put some money in. I put I think I put my stimulus check in. So when he said the stimulus, I'm like, I'm just gonna take a risk. You know what I'm saying? That's put smart. it That's smart, put it in there, made a lot of money, and then I was just kinda like, Well, how can I do this and, and not work? You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I started getting the options traded and things like that. But um I would say just educate yourself on what you wanna do. If you wanna do current uh, cryptocurrency, just educate yourself. Mm-hmm. Read yeah. books, read uh people who do that on the daily for work. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then try to make your own strategy. Yeah. So. Any books <coughs> for like just anything investing wise or anything? Um, I really don't know any recommendations on stock books on stocks or anything, but I think the biggest thing is financial literacy is the mm-hmm. whole thing. Just learning how to be smart with money. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, I didn't. I haven't learned about final. Uh, I didn't know anything about financial literacy until a couple years ago. Mm-hmm. You know I'm saying I didn't know why my check was short than what I grossed. So yeah. gross is the total you make, and then net is what you bring home. Yeah. So I was figuring out why so there was taxes coming out of my stuff and how I can make more money. And then I realized, like, bro, I didn't have jobs I made ten dollars. I didn't have make jobs that I made twenty two dollars an hour. Mm-hmm. But it's like at the end of the day, none of that's gonna change if you're not smart with your money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying you can make. 10 grand uh, an hour but if you if a person don't know how to handle that money it's gonna be gone yeah so financial literacy is key mm-hmm. yeah i used to talk about that how you mm-hmm. get paid you had this job that you get paid more at but then when you got like less hours you would somehow still have more money yeah it's, it's like a whole process too it would make me think so that's why i asked you like any books because i like reading so any book i'd be reading like anything with investing money anything like that so i think yeah. Rich Dad Poor Dad is a good yeah, suggestion book. So, yeah, that's anyone want to get on financial literacy, read that book. You heard what? You gotta read that book. <laughs> I've been on chapter two for the longest. Like five months now. You gotta settle down. <laughs> just get to a quiet spot and just read. I Put the audio phone book, down. Audiobook or some shit. You got the audio book and the book. Dude, that's because I just can't read, bro. Ever since I was little, just because of the mainly because I got dyslexia or some shit, bro. Because like I'll read, but somehow like I'll read it again, but then I'll be behind. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I yeah, just yeah. Want, like I don't know. I just can't. I think audiobooks is some shit. I'm not gonna have to. What is it? Audible or some shit like that? Yeah, it's like like that. Whatever you gotta do, bro. Yeah, bro. You read? Yes, but not as much as him. <laughs> <laughs> you know me? Like I don't. Um, I like to like do like personal self development and stuff like that. Okay. So I mean, that's a good book for the business if you trying to do some self improvement. You read it? Uh, what this you book? I haven't. Um, <laughs> he told me about it. I just yeah. looked through it real quick. Like. Like you said, it's some good information nah, there. Like it'll definitely put you on game, yeah. put you in a better position. So where do you see you see yourself in two years from now? I'm going to be one of the biggest artists in the world. That's good. I mean that. No, no, yeah. 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 I'm, I'm not joking. I'm yeah. saying, I got yeah, got some global records. Um, got got a good head on my shoulders, and you know what I'm saying I'm just new and fresh. Mm-hmm. Saying new and improved. Do you think about like what you do, like what can you do now in between those two years to get there? Mm-hmm. Like, have you, do you break it down or is it just yeah, you just I can break it down. Uh, first of all, we're gonna do good business. Mm-hmm. Make sure we, you know, what I'm saying our royalties is coming in. Make sure we understand what we're doing. Second thing is to connect with my audience. Like, mm-hmm. I gotta find my underdogs. You know what I'm I gotta find my, I gotta find Pop Trap Playground. You know what I'm saying mm-hmm. so I can get that following behind me. Mm-hmm. Um, I think. Making good music is good, but it's just kind of like figuring out what you want to do music for, like who you are and figuring out, you know what I'm saying, your image and figuring out what you're about. Um, I think, you know saying, a lot of times artists get lost in the sauce with just chasing bread and not and not really having no substance with themselves, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. outside of music, I'm cool. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm a dude you could talk to and stuff like that. So just being the same in the music game and out of the music game, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just being solid. You know, <clears throat> uh, what are you gonna do when you first get your big check? What are you gonna buy? Man, that's a good question. <laughs> I'll probably buy something from my dog. Okay. My dog Demer. Shout out Demer. That's my baby. Yeah, I'll probably buy something from my dog. You know what I'm saying? She's been here with me the whole, the whole time. So. Yeah. And who knows? I'll buy something stupid. Let me not get on here and be like, financial literacy. <laughs> like, bro, I'm gonna buy something crazy. Because they ain't never had money before. You feel me? Yeah. But, you know what I'm saying, them checks gonna keep coming in. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's the reason why I would get the first one. So, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They'll keep coming in. But mm, I'll get some for my dog, and I'll probably buy a chain or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. What do you see yourself in two years? Um, really in the same position. Like, just being able to push music out. And on the side, like, being able to do the like photography and stuff like that. Just really finding my identity. Yeah. Um, and like he said, being one of the biggest artists. Yeah. And being versatile with it, too. So... Good. It's cool when you guys have a like another like you know you guys are close and then you guys have similar goals you know type thing because then I feel like you guys can help each other motivate each other or like you might know something that he don't know. Like oh yeah, he, facts. So. he be putting me on game. Trust yeah. me, I be listening. Um, yeah, we just yeah. two different personalities. He more yeah. chill than me. Yeah, he yeah. way more chill than me. Yeah, I'm, I'm laid back. <laughs> I pee everything you feel. No, I pee you deserve it. Yeah. Yeah. Just taking that knowledge. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. I'm not the type of person that will like converse or talk a lot, especially if you don't know me, you feel me? I'll mm-hmm, just be yeah. like 
laid back, you feel me? Like, why is he quiet though? I'm really just peeping. Yeah. You feel me? I just intake everything, you feel me? So, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm the same way. I don't know if you can tell, like, the event, I was pretty quiet. Yeah. But now, like, yeah, we was just chilling. You know what I'm saying? Chilling, right? yeah. That's the call. So, what, what's next? You said August 30th. Is the day music. that the music's dropping? Maybe, maybe not. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, that's the goal, though. Like, August 30th, Hang My Jersey video will be out. Yeah. Manifesting it. Go Wait, watch. this will be coming out after that, though, right? That's what you said? Yeah. So, so out check now. it out. Huh? So, out now, right? It would be yeah, out now. Yeah, it would be out now. Yeah, by the time they're out. Yeah. Hang My Jersey out now. Um, the biggest record in the world and the, the most latest video in the world. The song has a lot of substance in it and it's for the lovers you know what i'm saying it's for people who was single before and not in a relationship and they're willing to sacrifice anything to be with their person that's a song for you produced by poncho <laughs> so how should be poncho okay so i met him through this girl in topeka uh -huh. she was Your recording <laughs> yeah yeah she was on my story right she was recording and her song she was making was trash. But whoever was recording it made it sound good. So I'm like, bro, who recorded it? She's like, blah blah blah, poncho. I'm like, okay, so I add him. I'm like, bro, I'm trying, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to do some music. Now this is where I really fuck with Poncho. Poncho would drive from Topeka to Lawrence, where I live, mm -hmm. and record me for free. Every time. Wow. Yes, for free. Every time. And he got to this point, he was like, yeah, I need some bread, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, all right, we do that. And then it was just, it was too awkward for us to do that. Because yeah. we were so organic. For me to pay him when we homies, you know what I'm saying, like that, and we got love for each other, it was like, you know what I'm saying, it was cool. But, yeah, Poncho would come to my house and record me for free and just leave. I'm like, bro, it's either this nigga believes in what I'm doing, mm -hmm. or, you know what I'm saying, like, he just solid. And he's both, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So... That's why I would record, I would rather record Poncho because we like alley-oop shit. Like, I'll, mm -hmm. yeah, I'll get the beat on, he'll throw, I'll record, you know what I'm saying? And I'll have some videos of how I record my, my music. Yeah. I mean, he gonna record it. Yeah. So it'll be through him, but I'm gonna t teach y'all how I record from A to B. Yeah. But um, no, Poncho was doing, I'm like, bro, super solid. And he started doing music. And Poncho is self-made because he used, he used, he's a YouTuber. He used to be a YouTuber or whatever, but he used to work like a regular job. Mm -hmm. And he told me, he was like, I'm doing this. This YouTube shit, I'm like, all right, you know what I'm saying? His subscribers start going up 10K, 40K, 80K, 100K. I'm like, whoa, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's growing and his content is good and stuff like that. And then he started doing music and he's just doing everything he said he was gonna do, bro. Yeah. And that's like the biggest thing because it's kind of like he a man of his words himself. Yeah. He said he gonna go to Georgia, he moved to Georgia. He said he gonna do music, he's doing music, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, when you around people like that, it's gonna pass off to you, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So I'm just appreciate him. Because without him, I would have none of these records they gonna hear. None of them. He recorded me, bro. My motherfuckers was trying to charge me a leg and an arm to record me and stuff yeah. like that. So, super solid, dude. Yeah. Dude, I, uh, actually, yeah, I got sneak peeks because I was on a Discord with him the other day. Mm -hmm. And he showed me, like, all your songs. Pretty much. Oh, shit. I, I'm gonna get on his ass, bro. <laughs> I'm gonna get on his ass, bro. bro. he was excited, though. That's how much he, like, I'm just saying, because that's how much he believes in you. And, like, yeah. He's a real dude, because, like, He's excited. He's like, yeah. yo, like, dude, can see Malloy, the yeah, he's like, Malloy's like dropping these songs and they're, dude, they're fire. They're going global. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, sneak this one, like, sneak, uh, check this one out real quick. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, damn. He's like, yeah, bro, I'm telling you, this shit is going to blow up. Yeah. And that's, he actually believes in you, bro. Yeah, crazy. without Punch, I would be here. I don't give a fuck where I'm at. On the biggest stage, wherever I'm at, I'm going to give my credit to that man because solid dude, bro. I like, mm -hmm. I'm telling you that shit. That shit make me emotional, bro. Yeah. To have someone believe in you like that, that shit that's crazy. Rare. Cool. That's rare. Bro, what? That's, that's why when he called me, I'm like, what you want to do, bro? He said he want to throw an event in, in Lawrence. All right, I'm going to set it up for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, what you want me? To, what you need me to do? You know what I'm saying? Because it's just kind of like, I fuck with you. So Yeah, yeah bro. He's a solid dude because even for the podcast, he gives us advice yeah. for the podcast too. And like, yeah, he's a cool dude. He'll take like time. He took like two, three hours out of his day to like, yeah, Give, break it yeah, down, break it down, yeah. and everything like that. And you gotta think. So right now, Poncho's on a bigger, bigger scale than me. Poncho has a manager. He's in these. He's in the industry. Like Poncho's in the industry. So yeah, I kind of when he tells me advice about what's going on, I gotta take a little bit more, take heed yeah. and listen. Cause I'm like, okay, he's there. He's where I want to be. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So don't rebuttal what he's saying. Just take it in and evaluate, and analyze, and apply that shit. Yeah. So when he called me and be like, this, this, and this. I'm like, okay. Cause you where I want to be, and he's younger than me. Poncho's like nineteen. Yeah. He's a young cat. Dude's fucking brilliant. You know what I'm saying so. Mm -hmm. 
you know, shout out to him. Yeah. <clears throat> what time is it? It's 44 right Oh, okay, yeah, we gotta, my bad. It's it already for 44 minutes, we gotta cut it short. Mm -hmm. But we're definitely gonna bring you back in because like there's so many questions we have and like so many things we wanna talk about. Mm -hmm. But I think this is like a good, you know, for the audience to get to know a little bit more of you, mm -hmm. more about you, like yeah. your fans and stuff. Is there anything you wanna promote? Uh, Social media, music. music. Yeah, yeah. Um, Instagram. My name is Malloy. TikTok. My name is Malloy. Um, Pop Chart Playground. Bowie Boy. Um, people on people ask me why I like Lightning Bolt so much because David Bowie he died, mm -hmm. but like I I like I love him. I like his image. Uh -huh. So like if you see the earrings and stuff like that, you yeah. see. Um, I take Pop shirt off right quick. Sorry, that's because the uh, the flash. No, <laughs> pop trap. Got the. On the is that back. yours? Yeah. That's your, you know what's uh, crazy? This We're is my brand. Actually, use that same uh, little flash thing. For oh, okay, for real. Yeah. Yeah, this, this is, is my brand. brand. Yeah. This came out like four years ago. Wow. So if you if if you look at the shirt, it's the evolution of pop trap. Yeah. It was first. It was my genre. So y'all don't see pop trap playground on it because I didn't think of that as a uh -huh. as the movement at the time. So now yeah. I do. So the new merch will have pop trap playground. And then the shirts on the back will have a QR code to my website. So when people, when you walk in public, people scan it. They'll that listen to the website. Hard. So, Bro, yeah. Shit. <laughs> 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 yeah, but yeah. Uh, Pop Trap Playground, you know what I'm saying? For the underdogs, uh, you know, come, come home to us, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, That's appreciate it. Is there anything you want to promote, bro? Uh, probably just myself. Shit, Zay Productions, fuck with me. Zay Day, you know what I'm saying? The artist coming out. Shout out to Pop Chop Paper. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Zay Productions. Yeah. You got anything now? No, just appreciate y'all both taking the time today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great sure. knowledge from both of y'all. So. Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah. If you guys want to cop some merch, come on by. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like I said, follow. Check out his music video. It's already out. And yeah, guys, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.